Hello and welcome to Amy Nolte Music. I'm Amy Nolte and today I'm going to be talking about the Grammy nominated jazz solo by John Schofield off of his album Country for Old Men. Now, I'm pretty sure this is a play off of the movie that came out in 2007-2008 called No Country for Old Men and I think it's kind of genius because John Schofield is He's almost 75, I think. He's been playing a super long time, but I don't think any of us think of him as an old man. I think we just think of him as an excellent musician who rips on the guitar. But I like what he's done here with this album because he's kind of taken songs that you might think are for old men, like old country western tunes, which I'm actually a great big fan of. I'm not such a fan of modern country music, but I can listen to old country western for a long time and not get tired of it. Something very simple about the one chord, the four chord, the five chord, and a simple melody that stands the test of time. And I think that uh, Mr. Schofield knew that. And I also think he kind of wanted to say, look, these are the songs I should be listening to right now. And maybe the songs that other men that are my age are listening to, but look what I can do with them. There's a lot of good old songs on this album. There's um, Jolene by Dolly Parton. Uh, Mama Tried is on there. Wayfaring Stranger. A lot of good old tunes. But the one that he's nominated for, for the best jazz solo of the year, is on I'm So Lonesome I Could Cry by Hank Williams. This is a personal favorite of mine. I, I do this song with my trio. And uh, John Schofield does it a lot differently than I do. It's really cool how he handles it. Now, a lot, a lot of the tracks on the album, he actually um, follows the form and, and plays over these chords. But on this particular track, he doesn't really do that. In fact, while the tune is happening, like on the head in and on the head out, he never even goes to the four chord. He just kind of stays on the one chord and alludes to the five chord, which is fine because what he ends up doing with the song is just treating it like a big free piece. Kind of like uh, Miles Davis's Freedom Jazz Dance where all they do is play this melody that's really cool and then their only guideline is like it's kind of in B flat seven. This is kind of what it's like. It's an amazing solo. He starts off kind of with motifs, building, playing little motifs from the melody, changing key with them, but he doesn't do that for very long before he just launches into his own stratosphere. He's got Larry Goldings on the organ backing him up, and Larry Goldings launches into his own stratospheric kind of solo right after John Schofield's done. But I would like to teach you uh, just my favorite part from the solo. I'm just gonna go ahead and say it's the best part from the solo because why not? I like it a lot. So I'm going to teach you today how to play the very best part from John Schofield's solo on I'm So Lonesome I Could Cry from the Country for Old Men album. Here we go. All right, the part I'm going to play for you, and it's not really the best part of his solo. You know, that's crazy for me to say. I'm just teasing. But I'm going to play starting at 125 and going to about, I don't know, 132, 133. And we're going to listen to this augmented concept that John Schofield improvises with. That's what we're going to go from right there. So it's kind of cool. I, you know, the, the song is in the key of, of E. As soon as his solo starts, it's like um, he just moves through different tonal centers. And you guys should you should analyze his solo a little bit. As his solo progresses, the, the tonal centers I can hear are E7, E flat seven right away, and then to A flat seven, uh, B flat seven, E flat seven, A flat seven, B flat seven, back to E7, A flat seven. D flat seven and E flat seven. So he's just kind of moving through these centers. And um, I mean, those are the ones that I heard in that order, but you really kind of have to stretch your ears to hear those tonal centers. And 
you know, other people might argue with me about it, and that's fine, and that's cool. Um, so by the time he gets to this lick that we're talking about, and to the best of my ability, I, I kind of think that they're still on an E7 through all of this. So it could be different than that, but, but I think it's a really cool sound over an E7, so that's, that's where I'm going to pretend that their tonal center is right now. And so if we've got E7 going on, these are the notes that he uses. He just takes this cool little motif, he goes do -ba -do -ba -do. So that's like E major, it's like E Lydian, right? And then he's gonna hop up so that this is an augmented sound. And he, and he takes the sharp five and the dominant seven of the E chord. It, you know, this is still assuming that we're in E. And now he's gonna go up He's going to go up a major third from the D that he was just on. And, and then up again. So it's, it's these notes. Those are our notes. That's very E dominant Lydian uh, with a nine. It's also very E whole tone scale, isn't it? But as I hear him doing this lick, I think of it as an augmented kind of study. So this, like this, you have these two augmented chords that are formed out of the whole tone scale. I'm sorry, you can't quite see my hand. All right, you have that augmented chord, and then you have this augmented chord, and they're a whole step apart. It's really cool. And then he just kind of throws caution to the wind and plays something that he thinks is pretty for a second, which is D, F. I love that part. And then, and then he does like this. He plays the augmented chord that he's just been messing around with. And then he, and then he moves up and plays this augmented chord. He moves up a minor third and plays this one. So we've got... He's going to scoot down a half step from where he ended, and it's a whole step from where he started on a C. He plays another augmented chord. So let's look at these notes. We've got D, B flat, F sharp, D, and we've got an F and an A and a C sharp. So we've got, now we've got these two augmented triads. Ah, forgive me. We've got these two augmented triads, just a half step apart. It's really cool. And then the next one, he gives us this one. So really a, a nice whole tone scale. And then he plays these notes. Which maybe mean that he's moving toward a different tonal center. I don't, I don't know what it means, but it's a cool lick, isn't it? So we've got... <laughs> Let me show you these notes, how it looks. So here's a little shot of my sketch. Um, these are the tonal centers that I think he moves through. And here, this is the beginning of the solo. I didn't write the rhythms. I'm more focusing on the notes because I think they're important. So this is like that. I think it'd be a great challenge to try to sing these without without playing any of those notes, you know, try to get through it all. not easy. You have to think pretty hard. And then this is the next part. So we've got a D augmented, F augmented, C augmented. Anyway, there it is for you. I think I'm going to call these videos a track and a lick. So here you go. It's I'm So Lonesome I Could Cry as played by the John Schofield Quartet and a beautiful augmented lick that shows up at about a minute 30. Let me know what you think, everybody. 
All right, thanks for learning that with me. I had a great time. I hope you listen to the whole album. I hope you go buy it from iTunes and support our friend, Mr. Schofield, and enjoy all that he's got to offer because it's a whole lot. Thanks for being here. I'll see you next time on Amy Nolte Music.